Okay, we've got a lot on the board today, so let's sort of get right into it. Uh, so I've got these two charts. Uh, I want to explain what these two charts mean. Uh, so on the left, we've got uh, L, which is our confounder. We'll call this our confounder. Uh, in this case, it might be the severity of uh, patients uh, undergoing heart transplant. So these guys might be mild, the zero case might be mild, the one case might be severe. Then we have for each of these, their uh, effect, you know, their average survival time under the treatment and average survival time under the non-treatment. So we got these numbers perhaps by taking a billion samples uh, and then averaging them. So these, these are the true numbers. Um, so for example, if you are mild, you will survive two days if you get a heart transplant and you'll survive three days if you don't get a heart transplant. And if you are uh, severe, you'll survive one day if you don't get a heart transplant or if you do get a heart transplant and two days if you don't get a heart transplant. Uh, so we notice the average causal effect for the mild is one and the average causal effect for the severe or the critical is also one. If the average causal effects between these subpopulations are both the same, we would say that they have no effect modification. No effect modification. However, if we look in this example, the average causal effect of the one of the severe case is still one day, but the average causal effect of the non-severe case is now two days. So we'd call this effect modification. Effect modification. It's important to take note of these things because researchers, examiners might look at specific subpopulations via stratification, which is what we've done below, and check out the average causal effect between all of these or in all of these subpopulations. They might find the subpopulation with the greatest causal effect and they might treat only that subpopulation uh, because they might have limited resources to treat. Okay, this is effect modification. This is no effect modification. Uh, I do want to do uh, to just note one thing before we continue here, and that is uh, these effect modifications might occur in, in tiny populations. Um, so, for example, you might be looking at, again, uh, pet owners in Illinois that are left-handed. And perhaps the pet owners in Illinois that are left-handed, uh, heart transplants work very well on them. Um, so you might get these very complex uh, interactions uh, in, in these sort of uh, divided subgroups. Okay, so now on to the second point that I want to make here. And that second point is that uh, both effect modification and non-effect modification can confound. So both can confound. Uh, so we had sort of discussed before uh, exchangeability um, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we had both uh, discussed before exchangeability and how exchangeability can make uh, association into causation. Uh, but you might be thinking to yourself, well, in the case where we don't necessarily have effect modification, uh, I don't need to worry about exchangeability uh, because it seems like the average causal effect is going to be one regardless of how I split it. Now, so this would be true if the average causal effect for every single individual in the uh, L case of equal to zero was two when they were treated and three when they were not treated. In that case, you wouldn't need to worry about exchangeability. But let's say you had these two parts of the population, L equals zero and L equals one. Let's say you only treated people that happened to be in the severe condition. So uh, your average of the treated would be one. And you only uh, didn't treat people that were in the mild condition. So your average of the untreated would be three. So the association between these two would be one minus three or minus two. However, the average causal effect is in fact minus one. So I just want to be careful with this. Just because there's no effect modification does not mean that you can get away without having exchangeability. Exchangeability is still extremely important. Effect modification is simply there so you can see which uh, smaller uh, subsets of the population uh, might uh, receive more benefit from the treatment. 